Welcome back. This video is actually the sixth in a series of Git videos that I'm making for this channel. If you haven't already seen the previous five, then I'd recommend watching those beforehand in order to fully understand the topic that we're going to cover in today's video. Enjoy. Git! Yeah. <laughs> I need professional help. This is another Git video for the series on my channel. In order to help you fully understand Git and how to properly use it, in the previous five videos, we've covered the command line basics of Git. Commits, branches, merging, remotes, pushing, and in the last video, how to work alongside others in the same repository. We saw Ken Bedell, the other user, upload his changes to the server, and then my user used the fetch and pull commands to get Ken Bedell's changes onto my machine. However, if you remember correctly, Ken Bedell uploaded his changes directly to the master branch. This is a big no-no. And instead, Ken, and in fact, all the users contributing to that repository, should use a process called pull requests and have their code reviewed before it gets integrated into the main code base. So in this video, I want to explain to you the process of pull requests and code reviews. So let's get into it. Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. As usual, if you enjoy what I do here on this channel, then consider hitting that subscribe button. And of course, if you like this video, give that thumbs up icon a little click. So most teams or projects use the master or the main branch as their production code. This master or main branch is the version of the code that they release to the public. Instead, what most teams do or should do is work on other branches when they write their feature code or when they write their bug fix code. And only once that code has been given the green light will it be merged back into the main or master branch. If any of what I just said confused you, then don't worry because I have a video on branching and a video on merging in this very series. That means that pushing code directly to the master branch is not right. It would essentially be you skipping the green lighting process, the process where your code that you have written alone is checked by someone else to make sure that you haven't done something stupid or broken the rest of the application. This green light checking process is called code review. Someone else on your team will literally look at the code that you have submitted and check it. And the way that they do this, instead of taking just the entire code base and trying to figure out where the changes were made, is actually through a pull request. And a pull request is something that the code author creates. The person that wrote the code, that wants that code brought in to the main code base, and 99% of the time, this is done on your online Git repository. So in our case, we're using GitHub to host our Git repository. So for us, a pull request would be created on the GitHub website. And most, if not all, of the online Git repo providers will have a pull request functionality or capability. It just might look slightly different from one provider to the other. And a pull request is hopefully exactly as it sounds. You are asking for your code to be pulled into somewhere else, another branch. So for example, you could make a PR, a pull request, to have your branch called new feature be pulled into the master branch. You are requesting for that to happen, for your code on the new feature branch to be merged into master. Then once the PR has been created, another dev on your team would review the code and either approve it, say, yep, that's fine, make that part of the master branch, or alternatively, give you some feedback on what needs to be tweaked first. If, of course, your pull request gets approved, that means then that your code can be merged into the target branch, the branch that you wanted your code to become a part of. And of course, when I say merging, I really mean a git merge. Your branch is merged into the target branch, and thus your code is now part of the main or master branch. So just in case a visual example is useful to you, then I have a diagram. In this diagram, we have several lanes going from left to right. These are our branches over time. 
And of course, the little circle, the little nodes are commits. And you can see the master branch at the top has version numbers associated to it. So as I said, the master branch might be the version of code that we release to the public. And we have all of these other branches that are hotfixes or develop branch or feature branches that are slowly over time getting merged right back up into the master branch. And this merge backup process is hopefully done via a pull request. So over here, for example, this release branch is hopefully being pull requested back into master to create the actual version 1.0. The code review process is incredibly important, especially if you're working on a repository with people other than yourself. You need a way of seeing the other code that the other developers are bringing into the code base and vice versa. It's a way of keeping the other developers up to date with what's happening with the code base. And of course, it's a way of providing confidence to the code that you've just written before it gets released. So with all of that theory out of the way, let's have a demo. Let's see how we can actually make a pull request and let's code review it. So to start with, we're quickly back in the terminal. On the left, we have my user, Cardelio, and on the right, we have Ken Bedell on a different machine. Just to remind ourselves, I wanna see the last few commits on the master branch. And we can clearly see that the last two commits were by Ken Bedell. And remember, we pushed with Ken Bedell directly to the master branch, which is not the right thing to do. Instead, to make his changes, Ken should have made a new branch, branching away from master, done his changes here, and made a pull request to try and get his changes right back into master. That would be the safe way to do it, and that would enable us to code review it. So let's do exactly that. We're gonna use Ken Bedell to create a pull request into our repository. So over here on the right side, we're on Ken Bedell's machine. And of course, if I use the git branch command, we can see that we are on the master branch. We don't wanna be there. So I'll just clear the screen. I'm gonna use the git checkout dash b command to make a new branch. Of course, the git checkout command literally checks out a branch. It makes you look into that branch, but the dash b creates it as well. So it's like doing git branch, branch name, and then check out afterwards all in one fell swoop. And I'm gonna call this branch berry. Of course, we have the two files that make up this repository. I'm gonna quickly change the ABC file and I'm gonna add something. It really doesn't matter what. In here, I'm gonna do uh, strawberry. Uh, berry is not a berry. I'm gonna save and quit. Okay, I'm gonna use git status now just to check the status of our repository. Remember, it's always good to do that often. And you can see ABC has been modified. We're gonna use the git add dot command to add those changes, git commit command, and I'm just gonna give it a message here, call say berry, uh, berry, and berry three times. Okay, so we committed it, and now if we just do git log, we can see right at the top is our new commit with our changes. And of course, the final bit, I need to use what we learned in the fourth video, um, the git push command to upload all of those changes in that branch to the server. So git push origin, which is of course the nickname for our server, and then the branch name I wanna push. So I wanna push the berry branch. It may of course ask you to authenticate. We'll talk about different protocols, HTTP or SSH in another video, but for now I'm just gonna give it the Ken Bedell details. And the berry branch has been pushed. So from now on in the video, we won't need the terminal anymore. We're gonna use the web browser to do our pull requesting and code reviewing. So if I just go to GitHub, and of course I go to the repository that I'm working as part of, I'm logged in here as Ken Bedell, and you can see immediately this yellow bar has popped up and it says Berry had recent pushes less than a minute ago. So it's saying, oh, this new thing, this new branch has been pushed. And it's saying here immediately, the green button, compare and pull request. So on GitHub, because I'm logged in as Ken Bedell here, I'm sort of being notified on the, the main screen of the repository. And with a single button click, I can be taken to the pull request screen. Of course, on GitHub, there is this pull requests tab. And if I click it here, we have that same yellow bar. So let's click it. So depending on what online provider you're using, GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever, this screen will have similar ideas, but may just be laid out or look different. The first and most important part is this top bar here. This is the bit that says, hey, take this branch and I would like to request it to be pulled into this branch. And this is really easy. The arrow on the screen is the dead giveaway. This here is automatically saying, I want the berry branch, and of course I can pick from different branches, to be pulled into, arrow into, it's going into the master branch. And of course I can change which branch that goes into as well. After that, we need to give the PR a little bit more information. We maybe need to leave a comment as to what this code that we've made is achieving, um, give it a title. And of course, at the bottom, we have the all powerful code diffs. And you can see here, it'll show a list of the files that have changed and what changed in that file. 
it will take the destination branch, in our case, the, you know, the target branch, the master branch, and say, hey, what is the difference to the berry branch? What's the difference to the branch coming in? And it will show you very quickly and easily the diffs, the differences. And these diffs, these code diffs, is what makes the code reviews possible. So just really quickly behind the scenes, I've made another pull request with a couple other changes just to highlight the power of code diffs. We're not interested in this PR, we're not gonna do it. I just wanna show you the diffs and how they look. So here, um, it shows you all of the files that have changed one after another. And in each file, it shows you in green with a plus, the lines that have been added. And in red with a little minus, it shows you the lines that will be removed from each file in that um, collection of commits, in that branch. And as I said, these code diffs enable the power of the code review without having to go into the terminal or without having to get the whole code base really quickly in the PR, a reviewer can see what has changed. So if we go back to Kemberdell's screen here, of course, we're seeing just his very simple diff at the bottom. One file, one line was changed and we need to give it some information. So in these two boxes, I'm gonna try and explain the PR a little bit. Of course, because this is a demo, I'm just gonna fill it with nonsense. Uh, the berry, 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 I'm gonna call it all the berry info. And in the comments bit, where I usually would describe what I've changed, how to test it, any bugs, any problems, anything to help the developers and the history of this repository make sense. But of course, I'm just gonna write, um, this is honest truth, isn't it crazy? And then underneath, please approve this PR. Nice. When Ken Bedell is ready, he's made sure the correct source branch and the correct destination branch are in. He's given a title and a comment and he's checked that his changes himself he's okay with. He will create the pull request. Again, depending on what online provider, GitHub or Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever, this may look slightly different, but the consequences and the ideas and the concepts are all the same. So Ken has created a pull request and you can see here. In fact, Ken even has the green merge pull request. This is the approve button. This is the yes, do it, merge it in. Because in this case, I haven't set up the branch security settings. I haven't said, oh yes, only Cardelio can um, merge and approve changes. Right now, it's just open the wild west. But let's pretend that button isn't available to Ken Bedell and let's go back to Cardelio's screen. So I'm on Cardelio's GitHub now. And you can see in the top right, I've even got a notification. And it says here about that pull request that's just been created. So I can click on that and see the pull request that Ken has just created. So as the potential approver, the person that is going to review Ken's code, I can see his PR, the title of it, the information, and most importantly, here I can see the commits that make up that branch, that pull request. Of course, I can see all of the commits, there's just one here, but I can see the code that went into that commit. So if I click there on that little button, I can see the diffs. And as I said, as a reviewer, that's incredibly powerful. It quickly shows me what's changed and what's different. So as a reviewer, I, Cardelio, then would look at the code and go, hmm, okay, I'm happy with that. If I wasn't happy with that, I could literally, in this uh, GitHub editor, and Bitbucket is the same, it lets you do these inline messages, I could write a little message saying, um, at Ken, uh, this isn't okay, um, it's rubbish. Um, and then Ken would be notified about that comment but I'm not gonna add that, I'm just gonna cancel that. Instead, as the code reviewer, I wanna say that this is fine, this code is fine, okay? So I'll go back to the PR here, and what I can do is I can merge pull request. If I hit that button, what it does now is gives me the commit message to make for the merge that is happening. But for now, this is absolutely fine, I'm just gonna take the defaults, and the message, of course, is the merge pull request. I'm gonna confirm the merge, and voila! The pull request was successfully merged and closed. So first of all, merged and closed. Let's refresh the pull requests tab here. You can see now there are no pull requests because they have all been, all been dealt with, right? However, if I head back to the code now, this is the interesting bit. The pull requests, the requests to take those berry changes and stick them back into the master branch were accepted. So that code change must be in the master branch. And if I go here, I'm looking at the master branch here and look in the file that we changed, the ABC file. If I click into that, you can see the third line, strawberry is not a berry, is in our master branch. And that's the power of the pull request. It gives you that extra barrier of safety when adding code directly into the production branch or the master branch. 
before it goes out to the public and breaks everything. Remember, back in the last video, we made Ken Bedell a direct collaborator in this repository. Because remember, GitHub acts in a slightly different way. GitHub, when people don't know each other and they're not collaborators already in a project, still enables people to make code changes and to offer them up and to make pull requests for them. Except for it uses that forking thing where a user that wants to get involved would fork the entire repository. They're essentially creating a duplicate of the repository. Then they would work happily on their version and can still, this is the important bit, they can still make pull requests from their repository into the main real original repository. And that's important to know because you don't need to be a direct collaborator, somebody that the original author of the repository has said, yep, they're allowed in. You don't need to be one of those. You can still, in the GitHub world, fork the repository and make pull requests the exact same way. And we've essentially skipped the forking process by enabling Ken to be a direct collaborator. This would match how professional teams around the world work as well. For example, on Bitbucket, there's no forking. You are just invited to be part of a repository because of course you already know your teammates. You know that you're all working collectively to a single goal. Whereas online with GitHub, the forking process exists to enable open source software development, to enable collaboration even when you don't know the person and their objectives. And that is it. Hopefully all of that has made sense to you and now you should be fully equipped through the six Git videos that exist already to actually work on a online repository with others using Git and of course the power that the command line version of Git gives you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and of course hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos, especially the next in the Git series. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. It kind of looks weird. Or do I look weird? It kind of look weird. That's different, isn't it? Whoa, I did that in one take. There's another git. Oh, that's too loud. Woo wee! How long was that? 12. Let's keep moving. Yes, only. <coughs> get, get lost. <sighs> Ken Bedell. Ken. Ken. PR. No, pull request. Uh, beautiful. I didn't do a clap. You gotta redo all that.